Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. All right, so we're going over to France. We're going over to Rhone. Uh, I've got a wine here. Again, I bought at World Market. Um, I did buy it partially because it's from the Rhone, and I don't drink a lot of Rhone wines. Um, number two, it had a little, like, shelf, not shelf talker, but a little bit of POS as in point of sale material or point of purchase, depending on the industry where you talk about that said that uh, Parker gave it an 89 out of 100. Is that what he's saying? Or Note gave it an 89 and Parker gave it 100. I doubt he gave it 100. So I'm going to say that he probably gave it an 89 out of 100. So, um, so I'm like, okay, I'm buying a wine because of this. Plus, I've got Braille on here. All right. So what wine is this? This is the two. 2009, there we go, oops, 2009, uh, Belarus, Cote de Rhone, um, it's manufactured by M. Chapote, um, it is a 60% Grenache, 40% Syrah blend, alright, we're going to rinse this out a little bit, uh, bought it at World Market for $11.99, regularly sells for $13.99, Again, the World Market Explorer program. Hey, when are you guys going to advertise on my show? Or on the website? I, I talk to you guys up all the time. Hint. All right, so uh, let's talk about um, some of the winery real quick. Um, in, in, come on. Here we go. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about some, uh, some stuff here. Uh, they're, uh, their history a little bit and and just a couple things that are really pretty cool if I can get to their stuff over here all right so they are biodynamic okay so uh, I believe there's a um, I guess not a quote but oh here we go here's a quote allowing the terroir to have its say meaning let's meaning means letting the soil and especially the vintage express themselves this integrity must not be corrected so uh, their, their idea is that let the wine speak for itself. Um, they actually specifically say they don't try to have a house style in their wines, which um, I kind of like that. I mean, you know what? If I'm going to have a Pepsi, it should always taste the same no matter what, right? You, that you're, you expect a brand to, to have consistency in its, in its taste or in its whatever. Like say, we'll say food, food or beverage. Um, in wine, that happens a lot. You kind of have that expectation that the wine should taste pretty much a certain way from year to year, especially your your mass-marketed wines. That you don't want variation from vintage to vintage. You want it to taste the same all the time. Wineries like this are like, hey, you know what? We want the terroir to express stuff. Now, my thinking is that there's still going to be a, a sense of style or a sense of you know the terroir, the sense of place with it. If I get a uh, Chapote Chapote um, wine that's 2010, the same thing, the Belarus. If I get that 2010, there should be at least some similarity between, between the two. So I can go, ah, yes, this is that, this is that wine, but there's a variation in vintage. At least that, that's my thinking. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But um, they, uh, they basically don't want to have a house style. Uh, Braille labels. Uh, I'm just going to read what they say. Uh, both a choice and a symbol reflecting openness and tolerance. Since 1996, all Chapote labels have been marked in Braille. This is also a tribute to Maurice Monnier of La Cizeron, a member of the family that previously owned the vines and uh, of the same name and who invented the first abbreviated version of Braille. 
He also founded the Valentine Hui, or Hui, I don't know, H-O-U-I with an umlaut over the I. Really don't know how to pronounce that one, sorry. Uh, association. So, maybe it's Hui. I don't know. Hua. I don't know. But uh, I just thought it was really cool. Um, I'm going to make an assumption that if I could read Braille, or I get, you know, if I understood Braille, how about that, that um, it would have exactly what's on the label. So I just thought it was pretty freaking cool. And I'm glad they mentioned it because I was like, man, I want to know what this Braille is all about. I mean, they're, what the reasoning is. So it wasn't just trying to be cool. It's there's they, they have more of a direct connection to it. All right, so the wine. So let's go over that. Um, let's see. It, the, they get the wine from four different vineyards or soil, you know, four different uh, vineyards from four different departments. The Drome, uh, Vaculouse, Gard and Ardèche, Ardèche. Again, my French isn't the best. Um, and basically, they they have like they're like four little corners. I'll throw the map up real quick of the Rhone and uh, the map from Wikipedia, by the way. I don't know if I need to say that or at, give the attribution that way. But um, if you look really closely, hopefully you can see it. You'll have each of those each of those departments or counties or whatever you want to call it areas. Um, are in, I think, gray on the map. Let me look. Yeah, they're like a light gray. Um, there's just, you know, four corners or four parts of a, of a square, four quadrants. That's what I'm looking for. So, uh, so the wine comes from you know, the grapes come from all those different areas. All right, so let's check it out before I run out of time. Anyone else follow there? Hey, watch the live stream. Hey, I know if you have a day job, you probably can't watch it, but if you're, you know, some waiter somewhere that doesn't do anything during the day, Watch the live stream. All right. All right. So on the nose, I'm getting red fruits, cherries, maybe. I get a hit of chocolate too. Raspberry. Elderberry. No, I made that one up. Because, <laughs> you know, a lot of times it sounds like these guys just make stuff up. You know, if I, if I think I smell it or taste it, I, I really do think that. I'm not trying to just pull something out of the air because I think I'm supposed to. Unless I do say that. I may go, well, I don't know if I really taste it because I'm thinking something else. But um, I don't just pull stuff out of my rear end just to sound important. Yeah, raspberry-ish. Okay, let's taste it. More raspberry, um, red fruits. Um, it feels a little bit hot or has high acid. I want to say, I, di I didn't see what the um, alcohol was, but these are not typically super high in alcohol. 14, okay. Yeah, not super high. I mean, it's not like, but it just feels like there's a little bit of heat to it. Um, moderate tannins or medium, sorry, medium tannins. Um, a little bit of wood there. So, um, overall, a pretty good wine. I think it's pretty tasty. Definitely needs to be paired with food. It's not a wine that you're going to drink on its own, which I don't think you should. Um, some wines you can get away with drinking on their own. This is the one I would want to pair with something. Um, grilled meats, barbecue, you know, that type of, that type of stuff. Um, I'm looking at the candy over here from the Easter episode. This is a recording off on the same day. A little robin's egg. I bet you, not that I've ever had a quail, 
what made me think of a quail egg? Where'd you go a quail? Don't know. So it's okay with chocolate, by the way. Um, where's that chocolate bunny? Where's that chocolate bunny? I got some of that. I'm gonna butt the head off. Ozzy Osbourne. Anyway, um, he's never gonna live that down, is he? Ever. And just like him, that was a prop, obviously, of a chocolate bunny rabbit. Oh, very much so with the milk chocolate. So, cheeses, so dairy, stuff with, you know, good cheeses, so blue cheese or Gouda cheese, cheddars, all that kind of good stuff. Some, you know, probably some, actually, probably the, the more, the more, softer cheese, you know, maybe the, the gooey cheese, you know, some of that cheese is like kind of runny, not necessarily a fan of that, but I bet you that would go awesome with that. All right, so I'm in agreement, 89 points. I mean, who am I to argue with some dude named Parker, right? Anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, why would I argue with Parker? 89. Um, yeah, I think 89 is a fair, a fair score for it. Um, I mean, you could go another point either way, but I, I don't think it's a bad score. If you can find it, buy it. I think it's definitely worth the money. Um, you know, especially at $12, I think it's easily worth it. Um, and it's, you know, it's a Roan, a Roan, uh, wine. Look at these lights. I just noticed they're kind of getting dimmer. They're about to go out. That, that light's going to go out any second. I can tell it. So let's go and wrap this up. I'll put the new batteries in for the last wine. Uh, as always, <clears throat> come to the website, make some comments down below. There'll be a web, there'll be a click, I mean, uh, click, there'll be a link to the website. Hi, how you doing? Another viewer. Hey, we're doing this wine. Yeah, anyway, um, stop by the website, click the link below for the website, leave a comment, friend me up, told you that light's going to go out. <laughs> leave a, uh, friend me up upstairs, upstairs, up top there, hit the donate button. Um, for PayPal, and we'll see everyone again next time.